after seeing an example of working out electric field of point charges in 1D, let's expand that to 2D. And this particular question, we're going to work out the force instead. And it's very similar because we use Coulomb's law in this case instead of the electric field expression. What's important here is we're going to practice further how to use unit vectors to deal with our direction in 2D. As a rough sketch, you can quickly kind of work out roughly where all the different forces point. Let's name these things. Let's call this Q1, Q2, Q3. In this case, the coordinate system has been defined for us. Makes our job a little easier. We have a distance between here. You have positive and positive charges. So this is the charge in question here. We want the force on Q. It gets pushed away from charge one because they're both positive. That's F1 on Q. And it's fairly small because it's pretty far away. Then charge two attracts because they have opposite charges. And it's probably it's at least three times as big because the charge is three times as big. And maybe even bigger than that because the distance is a little closer. And then the two Q also pushes it away. Again, it should be bigger than F1 because the charge is bigger and it's closer together. And we'll see how all these add up to give us what we need. What's more important than the rough sketch here is we need the specific coordinates of all these different points. To give us most things, what they're not giving us is this particular distance. But we can, of course, work that out fairly easily because we know this is one meter with a 30 degrees. This is really a one, two, root three triangle. So you could use your calculator and use sine or tangent in this case, but we're just going to simply use our knowledge of the one, two, root three triangle. So we know that this point is root three and one. This point is root three plus three meters and one. And we know this here is simply three and zero. There you go. Now, based on our sketch, you can see that there's no symmetry that we can exploit. So we can plug in numbers right away. There's, you, we don't expect anything to cancel out. Should really go without saying the total force is the force based on one on Q plus the force based on two on Q plus the force based on three on Q. All vector sum, of course. You can't sum things up like numbers. So let's work out all the direction in IJK and work that all out. Coulomb's law states that you're talking about Q1 times Q over the displacement vector from one to Q square with the unit vector like that. So most of these problems, anytime with discrete charges and electric field, electric force, the top part is fairly easy, K times Q times Q. It gives us a sign that's gonna all work out in the end. Whereas the key to the problem really lies in this displacement vector. As long as you get that, everything should be easy. The displacement vector again, I'll stress that this is from the source of the force to the charge feeling the force. So in this particular case, we're talking about from charge one to charge Q. In terms of the calculation is final minus initial, final being where you end up, where that's our Q, minus where you started, the source, R1 in this case. We already have the I and J components of the positional vector of my Q, whereas R1 is just at the origin, so it's zero and zero. This first one is fairly easy. Presumably everything is in meters. Once we have the displacement vector, we need to find the magnitude. So we take the I component, root three plus three, square that, plus one, which is the J component, square that. No fancy neat algebra is gonna clean this up very much, so calculator did the work for me. And then to work out the unit vector, we take the vector itself, divide by the magnitude, which is basically dividing each component by this number we just figured out. The meters and meters cancel out on both sides because it's a unit vector, should be unitless. And again, the calculator is gonna give us some long string of numbers that we should carry around until the very end. Now that we have all those in mind, we just have to sub in the number, k being eight times 10 to the nine, Newton meter square, Coulomb square, multiplied by 
my charge big Q, which is 8 microcoulombs positive, and my little Q given in the question as 5 microcoulomb. Showing you again, little Q, big Q, all divided by our length of the displacement vector square times this unit vector, which is my r hat. Without writing too many things out, because you don't need to see me write out numbers after numbers, this front part basically gives you that amount of newtons times that unit vector, which means take this and multiply to both of those, and we end up with numbers again. Numbers. Okay, and very similarly, we do the same thing for charge 2. Again, we need the displacement vector from 2 to Q, final minus original. I mean, you could probably already see that it's going to be simply 3 meters in the i hat direction, but if you feel less comfortable, you can always do the whole thing, and then everything should work out for you as long as you keep the signs consistent. And you can see here, we have root 3 minus root 3 in the i, 1 minus i in the j, and so you're left with 3i. Which makes our lives a little easier because you know that the magnitude in this case is simply 3 meters, whereas the unit vector for this one is simply i hat. That's an r, not a v. So again, we sub everything in. k, we know, and in this case, it's a negative 3 times your 8 microcoulombs for your charge of q2. Little q is still 5 microcoulombs, 3 meters square with the i hat over there. And again, you get more number. This will, of course, be negative. I had direction because it is attracted to the negative charge to the left. Similarly, we do the same thing for our third charge. So let's find out that displacement vector, final minus original, root 3i plus 1j hat. The magnitude gives you 2 meters exactly. So then the unit vector is root 3 over 2 i hat plus 1 half j hat, dividing the magnitude to both the components. And you work it all out, and you can check your numbers here. Summing up the forces in both i and j, collecting everything. I like to write my i and j in columns like these, so I can just sum it up all together, and you're done. So if you want to round it off, you can, and there you go. There's quite a few numbers, but the key point is to focus on these specific parts where we talk about how to find in 2D the displacement vector from the source to where the force is being felt. So we have final minus original. So the source is always the original. Working it all out, then we can work out the magnitude and the unit vector separately, which we'll sub into the different parts of Coulomb's law. That is the main takeaway here. So don't get hassled and dazzled by the numbers. The process is here is what's important.